I'm just absolutely thrilled um, to be here today. Um, Dr. Paul is somebody that I've watched for the past 26 years. And I've always admired the principal stance that he takes in Congress, often on the, the side of a 400 and some odd to one vote. Many times the other person on the side of it with it, Mark Sanford, casting the vote, trying to hold the line to liberty, hold the line on spending. So I got to talk to Dr. Paul very early. Um, I want to call attention to my wife and my daughter that are here this evening. I'm, I'm not sure exactly where they are, but if they please stand up, um, turn around and wave at these guys. It's about this notion that government stands to secure the blessings of liberty. Government stands for the proposition that we're going to protect freedom, we're going to protect life, liberty, and allow the pursuit of happiness, and we're not going to have government solve all our problems, we're not going to turn over all responsibilities to government, we're not going to turn over our dollars to government. As if we don't know in our DNA that that's who we are as Americans. That our country was founded upon these unique principles. Not aristocracies, not divine rule of kings. The power comes from the people and it is power to the government. And that's all we have. One of the nice things about being in South Carolina every four years is you get to, get, get to be candidates firsthand. And I've had that chance. I've had the chance to have dinner with Governor Huntsman, he's a fine man. I've had the chance to introduce Lee Gingrich and Rick Perry, Rick Santoro, Michelle Bachman, all these individuals, my constituents. And at the end of the day, when I sat down, I realized there are a lot of good people running for this race, but there's only one person, there's only one person speaking to what I believe is the core problem in our country today. You can talk a lot about national defense, you can talk a lot about other problems, but the biggest threat to our liberty comes from death. James Madison, John Adams, they all recognize that. You can have tyranny either by the sword or through debt. And the $15 trillion of debt, we are having tyranny through bankruptcy in this country. And there is only one candidate that is talking about this problem to the degree, at the scale, and with the scope that it needs to be talked about. You can't nibble around the edges anymore. We can't just go ahead and have good enough. We can't go ahead and have incremental steps. Incremental steps have grown our deficit to now over $2 trillion a year. It's grown our national debt to over $15 trillion a year. We need drastic, radical return to the principles this country was founded upon. And if you look at Dr. Paul, and if you look at the lonely battle that he's fought up there in Washington, D.C., and if you look at the courage that he has shown, and if you look at the withstanding of the pressure that I know he's under, because I feel it in Columbia. I feel it in Columbia all the time. Corporations are out there with their lobbyists, and they want handouts, they want subsidies, they want loopholes, they want grants, they want special treatment, they want crony capitalism, and it is rotting out of the republic from the very core. That's what's happening in South Carolina.
that when we cover the thing that makes this nation unique. You know about the, the, the Freedom Index that's been sliding. We know about the taxes that are rising higher and higher, and the corporate loop the loopholes, the cylindrical scandals. And guess what? It's not just the Democrats, guys. It's the Republicans that have to feed the 12 up there, too. Champion of the Constitution, the defender of free markets, and the next. <laughs> 